This is a real-time video of me editing GoPro photographs in Adobe Lightroom. It's really intended to be a companion piece for a video that's coming out later in the week, but it's kind of awkward publishing two videos at the same time, so I'm publishing this one a few days early. You might find it interesting anyway, um, but feel free to have a look around the channel. Most of our videos on here are a bit more interesting, outdoors adventures, that kinds of thing, that kinds of thing, that kind of thing. I'm sure you'll find something you're interested in, but if you wanna watch, but if you wanna watch a really long photo editing session, please stay and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it and hopefully you'll learn something. I made this video while I was quite tired and you can probably tell that from my voice. Here we go. Okie dokie, off we go. Uh, the first thing I always do with a raw image is I like to pull up the shadows. I'm gonna pull up the shadows in that. I'm going to pull the highlights down a little bit. And I'm going to go down and look for my clarity tab. I'm going to pull that up a bit. Adds kind of a nice dramatic contrast into the scene. And then I want to add a bit more drama into the sky. So I'm going to go up here to my uh, masks and I'm going to draw a linear gradient over the sky like that and then I'm going to look for my dehias function and that look at that it's like using a polarizer filter on the sky and it works really really well um it's a bit dark might brighten the whole thing up overall and then I'm going to use my curves here to add some contrast all right all right all right all right Had I toggle before or after? It was before? Yeah, yeah, I got it. And we go before, after, before, after. And one last thing um, I'm gonna do so it looks less like a GoPro shot is I'm gonna go down to optics here and enable lens corrections. Um, and then I'm just gonna change the profile to GoPro and it doesn't have the current version so I'm just going to select the Hero 10 black and that will automatically add that fisheye well and that will automatically correct for the fisheye there's before there's before after I make it look more like a normal uh, wide angle lens whether or not you want to use that effect is up to you now, so I'm going to use what I've done there as a base style. Um, I can then copy edit settings and then I can paste them. <laughs> Good corner. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, drop the exposure in that one a little bit. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I'm going to crop that. I think this will work better as a cropped image. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a little bit softer around the face there, so I'm gonna add some sharpening to that image and a little bit of noise reduction as well. Um, and because it's a GoPro, the background is sharper than the foreground. Like you can see Connor's face here is a little bit soft. You can see his jacket's sharp, but he's got a soft face. Um, so, I can select this, uh, well, I guess a few options, I could, a few things I can do here. I could use this um, subject mask, which will automatically select people. And then I could add some clarity to that. But if I do that, it's it's adding that over um, his entire body. And I don't want to do that. I just want to affect the face. So I just use a very simple radial gradient, which I drop on the face and add a little bit of clarity, just, just a little bit there, to add to the face. It's not a very stylized image. I could go in here and pull up uh, pull up the shadows a little bit and the curves, and it just makes it more flat. That? And just, I can pull up the shadows here and the curves, and that just adds like a film-like effect to it. You can see that. Yeah. Don't want to go too far. Let me go to there. That's quite nice. Pull down the highlights as well mess with that a little bit 
Let's see, might play around the colors slightly here as well. Uh, so one trick I quite like for some shots like this is pull the saturation away down and then adjust your contrast until it's looking sort of the way you like it. You know, kind of moody. I'll maybe go down and I'll add a bit of uh, vignetting. And once I've got it looking good in black and white, what I'll do is I'll then go back in and increase the saturation till it has sort of a look that I like. It's quite good there, sort of a, a film-like effect. Right, here is this shot. So again, I'm just going to paste that base style on. Um, that's actually pretty good. There's not too much I want to do there, except maybe I'll enhance the sky a little bit. So I'll grab my linear gradient, I'll pull that down, and just pull up the dehaze a bit. Just to bring out a bit more detail in the sky. Uh, this image, I like to rotate it. And also, oh, there we go. I <laughs> Also because it's so wide angle, I appear in it, but I'm going to... Paste the other settings. Uh, I think this shot could benefit maybe from a little bit more cropping. Just a smidge. Because the cloud's quite stretched with the lens correction. I kind of like that shot, actually. Again, we got again we got our before and after. Before after, it's quite a nice shot. Uh, this shot, I'm just gonna rotate it, and then I'm gonna paste that base style on. That's a bit bright. It's got like a crazy HDR look to it. So I'll pull that down, and I'll pull up those shadows a little bit. Do the same there. Pull the shadows up a little bit, and maybe I'll add. Um, I'll add a bit of vignette to this one as well. Just, a, just a bit. Okay, I think that's a better base style. So I'm going to copy, copy those edit settings, and use them from now on. Okay, this shot here, um, I'm going to pull up the shadows, I'm going to pull down the highlights. I'm going to add some contrast into the image, I'm going to pull up the shadows a bit, just so it looks a bit more flat and film-like, pull down uh, the contrast. And then what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to remove the saturation and then get the contrast and everything looking the way I want and then add the color back in. So let's even do the sky without, um, I mean, there is a tool here for doing the sky, but I don't actually like using it because it sort of puts a hard line. I prefer to use, um, there is a mask here, will automatically select the sky and then you can do stuff like apply dehaze. Um, if I'm using that, I tend to use it just to apply a little bit of dehaze and not too much. And then I'll usually still add another linear gradient over the top because I, th I think it just adds a smoother effect to it. So I'll pull down, you see what I mean? It gives me that like really dark, moody shadow look up in the top. Whereas if you apply it to the whole sky, it sort of overwhelms. Right, I think what I'm going to do here is actually I'd like a brighter patch in the middle of this. So I'm going to go select a radial mask and put it kind of about there. I might move it and just pull up the exposure. I'm just creating like this area of brightness somewhere in the image that just creates more contrast. 
yeah, pull up the clarity in there a little bit as well. Okay, I like that there. I think I actually want one over here on this side of this hill. Another radial gradient. Rotate it around, put it there. Bring up the exposure a little bit. Pull up the clarity. I'm gonna make that slightly smaller so it's almost like there's just a bit of light getting in from the sun. This is cheating a little bit, let's be honest. Okay. Um, and then let's go add our color back in. Until we're happy. We got before, after. Oh, I'm going to go and add the lens correction. Enable lens correction. We select GoPro. And um, we're just going to have to go with Hero 10 Black because there's no other choice at the minute. And that then makes it look like a non-fisheye lens. And you can decide whether or not you like that look. I quite like it for landscape shots. Um, although it has seemed to actually affect the brightness. I'm just going to go up and bring down that a little bit. Uh, a little bit more. Okay, I quite like that. That's a nice base style. So I'm going to copy those edit settings. Probably can apply it straight to that. So I'm going to go to uh, choose edit settings to copy, and I'm going to also select the masks. Copy that. Paste that on there. Oh, and I've hardly needed to do anything to that image before, after. That one looks really good, actually. Really like that. So these trees over here, I'd like them to have more of a bright spot on them, so that. Uh, circular gradient, or that gradient that I'd added to the other image that I've pasted on here. I'm going to move it up to those trees. Yeah, see I'm brightening up the trees now. And that one that was up on the hill there, I'm going to move it over here. Add a bit of brightness there. And the wall here in the foreground, I think that might be another good focal point. So your eyes kind of drawn here, then here, and then here. So you're looking back and forth. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to add a little radial gradient over the top of this. Just a smidge and a bit of clarity on it. Quite like that. The sky is starting to look a little bit overcooked for my liking. So I'm going to go into noise reduction, boost up noise reduction. And you can see that smooths um, that kind of noise that was starting to come into the sky quite a bit. Overall brightness might be a bit dark, so I'm going to go up and yeah, it was. Bring up the exposure. Again, just a smidgy widgy. Right, copy those edit settings now. Okay, happy with that. Uh, <clears throat> the shot, um, let's just Shot, let's just paste out its settings, see what it does. Interesting. Oh yeah, because I rotated this image, all the gradients, um, all our all, all the all the masks are going the wrong way. So I'm just gonna need to move all of those. Put that in the middle. There we go. And I think the overall brightness of this image could come up quite a bit. Here we go. And we got before and we got after. And that's an like those are quite nice shots. I'm actually impressed how good that's looking. And again, the sky there, you got a little bit too much noise in it, so I'm gonna go in and pull that noise reduction away up to smooth the sky. This shot could look quite good. Let's just paste and see what we get. Paste that style. Oh. Um, I've pasted the gradients on a rotated image, so um, uh, they're looking a bit funny. Let me just move that. That's quite a cool look, actually. I think I want the light 
from this one to be on yeah on the water and there yeah oh there's that other random little gradient can probably just delete that don't need it um before after I want, to, I want to try and see if I can get any detail in Connor here using the subject mask. So I'm going to go and go to subject mask. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. It's picked up the reflection as well. Did not expect that. Oh, I do not want it to affect the reflection. So I can go to this minus here and then I can, I can paint over or I don't want the mask. So I really don't want it affecting, affecting the reflection. So go back to subject mask and just play around with that a little bit. Just a little bit. It just means you can see a little bit and that's it to start with and then just bring that up slightly. What is that? Oh, that's my foot. <laughs> it looks massive. I hadn't realized my boot was in this shot. Okay, I'm going to crop this because I kind of like it though. Um, well, we'll try and crop my shoe out and see how it looks. I think it'll still work. Let's go with that. It's not exactly the rule of thirds, but I quite like it because it's got the full reflection in. Right. Okay, and welcome back. This is a different day. Um, I'm just going to pick up where I left off. That was the last photograph I edited. Went before, after. Let's move on to the next one. I think I'll do the rest of these maybe more from scratch. Um, so, cave shots. So what I want here is something nice and contrasty, but I do want to see a little bit of detail on the inside of the cave. I'm going to pull the shadows up. You can see um, the dark, the shadow areas are just kind of nasty looking, so I'm not going to lift that that much. I'll pull down that highlight a bit. And I'm just going to mess around with the contrast curve here. Yeah, I think the shot will actually look better if I add more contrast. I'm going to lift those shadows slightly, but not very much. Uh, let's see. Um, it's not, it's not the most interesting shot, to be honest. If I add a bit more clarity, it starts to get more interesting, actually. Yeah, it's a little bit more interesting. Not so much I can do with this. I think the next one will be more interesting because we've got um, a subject. So I'm just going to rotate it around. Um, <laughs> it's a pity Connor wasn't doing a less ridiculous looking pose. So lift the shadows. I want to pull down the highlights because I'm trying to get to see the way. You see the way when I pull down the highlights, you can see the clouds. So you can't see the clouds. Pull down. No, you can see the clouds. So I'd like to get that cloud information in the final shot I'm going to lift that brightness up on the exposure there let's get down a mess with the clarity okay increase the clarity now I've lifted the shadows and that sort of made Connor more visible but it's also entered just these ugly um, noise up on the top of the shots so I'm going to add vignette into this to darken that down oh yeah I think that yeah, good bit of vignetting. Um, where's the correction? I wonder if the lens correction will help here. Go into the old gooey poo. Red and black. Ooh, ooh, that's quite cool. I see, like that. Look at the ferns pop. Right, I tell you what I want to do. I want to make these ferns in the foreground pop a bit more. So I'm gonna add a real gradient chuck it over the ferns 
because that's kind of the, well, you, you see that you see the silhouette quite early on, but I like the fact you see the plant detail in here, and I want to draw attention to that and highlight it. So I'm going to draw that gradient. I'm going to I'm going to increase the clarity a little bit on those ferns. Let's move that a bit and just pull up the exposure ever so slightly on that. Now I also want to mess with the greens. I think this shot will be more interesting if green isn't you know slightly unnatural looking. So I'm going to go in here to color mixer, select my greens to start with, play with that, see if it makes a difference. Yeah, it does. See where I can go that way, make some yellowy, go that way, make some. Ooh, that's a bit too much. So I'm going to make them slightly bluish, almost slightly weird alien ferns growing in. Not too much. I don't want to make it look totally unnatural, but just a little bit. Pull up the saturation on them a smidge as well. Okay, happy with that. I'm not really happy with the what's happening in the center of the shot. It's a bit boring. So I'm gonna chuck a radial gradient just over that middle bit and have a quick play around with some things to see if I can improve them. If I open the exposure, it makes the clouds disappear. So I'm gonna try dehazing a little bit. Okay, that brings the clouds back. Uh, I think I need to selectively select Connor. So I'm going to go plus, select the subject, and hopefully it will detect Connor. It has detected him. It's also added this weird bit in the corner for some reason. So I'm just going to paint out quite a bit of that. Right. Don't want any of that. Thank you very much. How did that happen? No, oh, I'm back. Um, get back to that mask, and then just yeah, just brighten, lift up a little bit there, a little bit of clarity. Let's give him a little bit more saturation. Let's make a little hat, mini hat. Ah, let's see before. Oh yeah, before after. All right, I'm happy with that. Next shot, let's rotate this round. Bit of a boring shot, so I'm just going to go back to a shot that I think would be look, looks quite similar to this one. I just copy and paste the settings. Um, I often do this if a shot is pretty similar to one that's been done before. Making sure to select that masking so I get the sky effect. And I'm just going to control V or command V, paste those settings straight on, and yeah, I'm kind of happy with that as is. Oh! I'm going to pull up the shadows a little bit in this, because I'm trying to get that slightly flattened look. There we go. Okay, moving on. Um, this one. Boring shot. Again, I'm just going to Command V those previous settings. That improves it quite a bit, actually. Pull down the exposure. It's maybe a bit bright. And then this shot, I've already edited. <laughs> so you're not going to get to see that. There's before... After, I tell you what, I'll go and do quite similar here. I'll get rid of that one. Don't want that one. And I'll do this one quickly. Command V. I'll place paste that on as a bit of a preset. And I'll do too much to this one. Let me bring up the shadows a bit. Increase the exposure. And I'm going to leave it like that. So you've got one of these has been over the top processed. And then one with a more natural processing. Okay, this shot again, Command V, I'm going to paste those previous settings because I quite like, yeah. Right, we've got a gradient on the side there, which really should be, yeah, coming from the sky. Now, in this condition, this is where like a straight up um, gradient mask doesn't work so well because it, it's affecting the, the rock walls on the sides. So I could, in this case, use the sky select function, which, there we go, has just selected the sky. Then I'm going to add a bit of dehaze to the sky, pull down the exposure, increase the saturation. You get noise up there now, so I'm going to go down, increase my noise reduction. Uh, just the saturation a bit. The shot, whole shot's quite dark. I'm going to bring up the shadows a bit more. 
yeah, quite like that. It's, a, mm, it's not an amazing shot. Not an amazing shot. Uh, let's see. Same one from a different angle. I think that angle is better, so I'm just going to toss that one. I think this might benefit from a vignette. When in doubt, add a vignette. Let's add, uh, let's add a vignette. Uh, what have I done? Yeah, it does actually. It just draws your attention more to the center of the image, it makes it less about uh, those cliff faces, making sure to add lots of feathering. Maybe it needs more color. I'll boost the saturation and see what I think. Oh no. No, 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 no. I think. More contrast? No. There's just something not doing it for me with this shot. Clarity? Maybe a smidge of clarity. Um, I'm gonna add a gradient actually in the bottom here because I don't really like this. Don't really like that grass. It's gonna add a linear gradient on the bottom, to just darken down that foreground a bit of contrast to it. I think, yeah, I think I'm happy with that now. Increase the contrast slightly. Yeah, we'll go with that. Right, here's me, same spot, making a stupid face. Paste the settings from before. This time I'm going to keep that linear gradient because I don't care so much about the rock walls because it's all about me. <laughs> uh, bring down the exposure slightly uh, before, after. I mean, it's crazy how much of a benefit you get from just applying the distortion reduction. Action camera shot. Professional wide angle shot. Well, maybe not professional, but it looks a lot better. Um, I'm gonna, have you got any more information in the sky? No, this is. See, when I pull that right down, you've got that white area with a hard edge on it. That's, well, that's overexposed, so I can never pull that information back. So it looks a bit ugly to be able to see that, so just brighten it up so you can't see it. And I'll leave that shot like that. I'm pretty happy with that. There's same shot, different angle. Don't need it. Toss it. What's that? Okay, so these are the walls on underneath the waterfall. Uh, what can we do here? Let's just pull up the shadows. Pull down the Ooh. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. Okay. Horrible quantities of noise. Let's go down and see how much that we can reduce with noise reduction. Took that away up. And that's not not terrible. Pull up the cl clarity a bit. Um, can we get any more? No, the sky's overexposed as is. All right, this is not a great shot, but before, after, we'll pull a bit of detail out of it. It's still pretty nasty. Add a bit of contrast. Add a bit of clarity. We'll add a vignette. <laughs> vignette, as always, actually improved it, but I don't. Nah, it's not a great shot. Right. Last one I'm going to edit is the one of this um, hut shack thing in the forest. It's based on those sets from earlier. Give me something to start with. And what are we going to do here? Right, it's really underexposed. So I'm going to increase the exposure until sort of the foreground's looking right. The sky needs sorted out. So there's that gradient from earlier. Just flip it around so it's going the right direction. We uh, move. There we go. Um, let's do here. Is that a bit? Oh no. Yeah, there's not a huge amount of information in that sky. I don't want to make it look crazy bad. No good. Um, not a lot of good. Nah, the light's not great in the shot. When in doubt, pull up the clar clarity. Add more of a vignette back in. There you go. There's your vignette. Um, let's feather that a lot more so it's smoother. Um, I may add a bit of a radial gradient just to the end of that building. Oh, there is already a radial gradient oh, sitting on top of it all. Right, I'll bring that over the building then. Okay, so that radial gradient, as you can see, is what I prepared earlier. And it's just adding... A little bit of exposure, and it's also adding a bit more 
of that clarity setting. Let's see. Yeah, it's all right. Right. Let's see. Let's go through all these, and I'll tell you which one I think I'm the most impressed with. I think my favorite shot out of all those. I like that one. That's just simple. But actually, this one. Yeah, I think it's this one. It's just a really simple leading line landscape shot. You've got, um, I really like this really nice contrast of colors. You got like the, the sort of the white of the walls, um, and then you got the darker landscape around it, and the wall leads right away off into the distance. Just this sort of limestoney streak or granite streak, more to the point. And the fact the hills are browner that time of year. And then you've got the green of the trees. And then you get the blue of the sky. Yeah, that might be my favorite. The most artistic one is probably that one. That might be, maybe that's my favorite. If Connor didn't have his knee sticking up like that, this would be my favorite. But yeah, that's kind of it. Right, cheerio.